his faithfulness. Thank him for this beautiful, beautiful day. Um, we give him praise. So the Lord has been helping us to look at critical things in the word. Um, there's no other way, no other way other than that. Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says, I'm seeing the multitude. He saw the multitude and he taught them. So when you read the Bible in, intently and then um, with all um, diligence, there are certain things that will really, um, you know, um, get you up to ask a question, hang on, what is this? Especially when you see the red letters of our Lord. It doesn't matter what age you are in the Lord, whether you're starting your today or this. I want to tell everyone and then encourage everyone when you see the red letters, ask the Lord to open your eyes. Be serious about it. Matthew chapter 5. When he saw the multitude, he's opened his mouth and taught them. I want to know what he taught them. God, what did you teach them? If you are coming again to take us the righteous, if you have created us and you want us to worship, I want to know what is in your heart. I want to know what specific instructions. Yes, others may have written, Isaiah may have written, and Moses wrote, um, um, Ezekiel wrote, and Paul wrote, and all those. But the ones that came from you, I'm very interested. I want to mine into them. I want to um, look into them. I want to know why. Because ultimate is to please you and then to be with you on the last day. So brethren, it's not something we push down to the Sunday school class. It's not something that we get tired. It's not something we say, oh, is that the same thing again? Is that, it's not something you say, well, okay. But it's something that we said, okay. Is that what the master is saying? Let me look diligently into it. So we've been doing that all this while. In the past few weeks, we've looked at... Um, verse 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and now we are in verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And when we look at the scriptures and see what the Bible is saying there, and then um, for each and every one of us, because it's a message many people run away from, it's a message people don't want to hear again, it's a message people are like, oh, don't talk to me or what are they trying to do? Take away our liberty from us. What liberty? Liberty in sin and liberty to go to hell and liberty that Satan promises. Let's look at this, brethren. And then with, you know, good grace and say the Lord, turn with me to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For, they, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now look at this. When you are poor in spirit, when you are humble, when you are broken, when you recognize your state that you need him. If you ever notice that you need him, recognize it, pray for it, seek it, you will have the kingdom. One, two, blessed are they that mourn. If you are mourning, you'll be comforted. The comfort will come to you. Then three, blessed are the meek, they will inherit the earth. So his meekness is the sure way or passport or the, the highway to inheriting this earth. Because when you're weak, you're going to walk in wisdom. When you're meek, sorry, when you're meek, you're going to walk in wisdom. When you're meek, you can go through any door. When you're meek, this earth will be opened up to you because you can go in at every corner. And that's what the Bible is saying. So for those who are saying, Lord, I need favor. I need you to open doors for me. He just said to us, listen, it's meekness that will open those doors, that will give you that wisdom, that will allow you to go in where others will not be able. And then in verse 6, it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be filled. You see, for everything you're looking for, there is a solution. When you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you get it. But for those of us who will not go for it, who will not hunger, who will take, you know, to, um, the half measures or those who will, you know, r dwell in mediocrity, it will not happen. But if you hunger and thirst, like we looked at it last weekend, you will get it. And then he says again here, blessed are the merciful, 
for they shall obtain mercy. So with the measure you met, that's the measure it will be measured back to you. That's what you get. What you sow in is what you what we sow, what you sow is what you reap. What you put in is what you get out of it. So blessed are the merciful. So it's pure principles out there. But look at this particular one we're looking at today. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So while blessed are the merciful, they will obtain mercy. Blessed are they that mourn, they will be comforted. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. This is what the Lord is saying. Therefore, it's not something that we take for light, something that we go for prayerfully desire it if the creator if the one we're going to meet on the last day the one we're going to dwell and live with forever and ever says blessed are the pure in heart so child young old adult every one of us seek this purity in heart and then this purity in heart someone asked the questions at the global school of ministry lesson yesterday and says um, what are the other things apart from holiness that we will attain to meet and to see the Lord? And the answer to that question was, that's the life God has called us to. The life of righteousness and the life of holiness in all to please him, to see him here on earth, to see him in eternity, to see him in everything we're going to do, to see him in prayers, to see him in situations, in circumstances of our lives and that's what he said in psalm 24 verse 3 and 4 he says there who shall ascend unto your hill who will be that person that will get to your mountain to pray and lift up their hands and you will hear them who is that one that will intercede and you will listen you see ye that have clean hands pure heart because he says he's a purer eyes to be to behold iniquity and what is the pure heart we're talking about the bible says that out of the abundance of our heart as jesus said the mouth speak it when they were after oh your disciples didn't wash their hands before they eat and all those things. he says look it's not what goes in is what defiles a man but what comes out because the heart is the heart of the matter is in the heart as jesus told us that man conceived evil thoughts. And those evil thoughts are what? Idolatry, unforgiveness, lasciviousness, um, fornication, murder, envy, strive, stealing, all those things. The world, it goes first into the heart and it manifests on the outside. So when transformation comes, is that we be renewed in our mind. And when you talk about the mind, the root of the mind is the heart. That's where it embeds and then comes up. So when it gets this, it's blessed are those who are pure, who have kept this place. And then that's all about salvation. The Lord transforming us from darkness into light, from the dirty heart, the dark heart of unbelief, of idolatry, of wickedness. The Bible says it's even a shock to know what they're devising in this heart. And it says again that when they sleep, what goes on in this heart? That's why the Bible, Jesus said, is here is the most important thing. Because out of it are the issues of life. Guard it diligently. Guard it when you're alone. Guard it when you're in the public. Guard it when you're in the at church. Guard it in everything you do. Because everything we do is propelled all by what is in here. So people may be doing things and you follow them to do. You don't know the intentions of their heart. Why they are doing it. So it's where all the intentions are, the reasoning are, there's nothing on the face. Somebody may see you and not say a word to you. You don't know what is going on in their heart because their heart is the issue, is the matter. Somebody might be smiling at you. You don't know what is going on in their heart. You have no clue. We live in a world of deceit where if you want to get, get at people, you first of all befriend them. And then they relax and then you do what you want to do. 
So what is going on in your heart? What is going on in your heart? Is in the heart all these things? Everything in the world go on. It's also in the heart that the things are devised in the mind. Oh, I can build this. Oh, I can construct this aeroplane. It all goes on heart and mind. And you put your heart to it. You bring it out. Also, planning to kill, to destroy is also in the heart. Oh, wickedness, malice, envying. And it's also in the heart. Stubbornness is also in the heart. When you choose what to do, it's also in the heart. So Jesus is saying, blessed are the pure in heart. Those whose heart will be clean, that will not tend towards the enemy, towards Satan. And just as um, 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 Zechariah prayed, when his son was being dedicated, his son um, 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 John the Baptist was being dedicated. And when he spoke the prophecies in Luke chapter 1, verse 74 and the 75, saying that we may serve our father in holiness and righteousness all the days of our heart with all the days of our life if you don't have a pure heart you will not be able to serve god in righteousness no if you don't have a pure heart you wouldn't know the difference between wrong and right you wouldn't know the difference between your left and your right no if you don't serve if you don't have a pure heart anything can go for you absolutely anything but here he says that we may we are for beloved he says uh, that he would grant us being delivered from darkness being delivered so in nutshell the life the holy life or life of holiness is living the dark world which we have left which the lord yeshua had pushed us and washed us when he told Nicodemus in the book of John chapter 3, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus asked, what does being born again mean? Um, look at how old I am. Do I have to go back to my mother's womb and be born the second time? He says, no, Nicodemus, that's not what I mean. It's of the spirit. So the transformation from darkness to light is what we're talking about. And this is the ultimate so it's not about going to church. It's not about fulfilling the rituals. It's not about having a Christian name. It's not about having your Bible. It's not about, it's not, have nothing. It's your heart. It's what Christ is coming for on the last day. So it's not about being in missions. It's not about, what is your heart. What is the intent of that heart? What is the reason why you're doing what you're doing? Is it that Christ may increase and I will decrease? Is it that his name be glorified? Is it that men may be drawn? Is it that joy may follow? Is it that it will make for peace? What is it all about? Is it that I no longer exist but Christ now lives in me? That's the purity of heart, the intent of whatsoever we are doing, the reason behind whatever we are doing, what really propels the outside or the outward actions is what Jesus is talking about. And he says, those who will keep it pure, those who will keep it chaste, those who will keep it holy, they are the ones that will see the Lord on the last day. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, all of us having these promises of seeing him on the last day, of waiting for him, we have no option. I mean, we have no option. Don't think you can wriggle out of it. It's not mixed with the word, not at all. It's like pouring sand into the rice you're eating. You know, you cannot because you, how can you ever think of that? You finish up your teeth. You spew it out. Leave the food, just the food, so that you can enjoy it. That's what the Elohim is saying. Let the food be what it tastes. Don't add any poison to it. Don't pour sand into it. He says here, having these promises that we will see him waiting. We don't want to go to hell, not at all. We want to be with him in everlasting. Even here on earth, we have to want the joy. We want the peace. We desire for it. Go for it. Go. Whatever it takes, go for it. Don't compromise it. Don't. Even don't let yourself. We are created 
in us are in the nature of man. So the endemic nature, one time or the other, will want to push up, will want to show itself out. Please take, address it and make sure you don't continue in them because he's still coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. So he says, having these, let us cleanse ourselves daily, daily. Daily. Yes, the Bible says, be angry but sin not. Will we be offended? Yes, we'll be offended. Will things come out from us? Yes, it will. But watch it very quickly. Absolutely. Why? Because he's saying, having therefore these promises, will thoughts and then evil thoughts or things we see come into the heart? Of course. Yeah, because we're just like um, um, roaming about. He says, look, um, as we're going, all over us is the sky and the birds have, that's their place to fly around. So the birds can fly over our head, brethren. The birds can, you know, perch on our houses, but there's something you can't allow a bird to do. And what is that? To perch on your head and put up his nest or its nest on your head. Don't allow that. So as for flying over my head, that's fine. That's what they're meant for. But to spatch on my head and build a nest. And what is it? What does that mean? Don't allow that to dwell. Don't allow that anger. Don't allow the bitterness. Don't allow the stubbornness to continue and continue and continue. Ask the Lord for grace. The Lord will take it away. You'll be so shocked and surprised that things that happened you thought I cannot get out of it, the Lord will just bring your heart down again and you continue in normal life. Is the grace, is his grace, absolutely his grace, not by power. In Hebrews chapter 12, 14, he says, follow peace with all men. Ha, huh? is, that, is that easy? Not really easy, it could be very tough, very tough. You're busy make, trying to make for peace, but things around you are not allowing it. Do you stop? You don't stop. Sometimes it may crack. Yeah, it does crack. I'm a, I'm a living example. I can tell you it does crack. But then when you remember this word, when you remember the scriptures, that's why the Bible says that let the word of God dwell richly in you in all wisdom. That's the solution. As soon as the word of God comes, wow, it's like a giant coming to come to destroy the devourer. That's what it is. Because when these offenses come, they come to devour. The word of God is the giant and the superpower that comes in and looms large over it and covers your heart and spirit. Look, follow peace with all men and the holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The offense will fizzle away. I mean, the thing that stinks, that hurts, we fizzle away because a higher power has come. So, brethren, let's dwell in the word because that's how this holiness comes in. When trial and temptation comes out there for younger people out there, per pressure, and as it's coming, oh, do this and you can't do that. Oh, the word of God, the giant that is in you rises up and we just says, abstain yourself from all appearances of evil because you have sown the word into your life. That's what happens. Mm. And as the leo and temptation is coming, oh, come on, it doesn't really matter. Just for once, nobody is here. Do it in secret. The word of God you've hidden, hidden in your heart will come up and says, no, that God is of a purer eyes to behold iniquity. No, do not follow the multitude to commit sin. No, the words of David will come back to you. Where will I hide myself? In heaven, that's your dwelling place. On earth, that's your full stool. Even in hell, you are there because you created. So there's no hiding place. Keeping your heart pure in the Lord. These are the things. He will do it for us. First Peter chapter 1, verse 16. And then it says, Be holy. I am holy. When this word dwells in you, these are sure things. They are the things when you're going up. I know in the external, we want to put on this and put on that, put on our belt, good shoes, I'm hiking shoes, mountain shoes, and all that, trainers, and all. There are the most important, the good ones. 
that you put on spiritually before you leave. Dress very well in the word. When it goes out there and you want to move, the word will remind you. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Take yourself out. The example of um, 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 Joseph will loom straight in. Joseph said, no way. That word will ring in your ears. How can I do such wickedness against my God? You can compare it to, to, to the days. Because he was alone. Not known. No member of the family. That's him. So he could have done what of, he's lost them. Where he is, he's now in Egypt. Remember, he was sold first to the Ishmaelites. Or to the, and then to the Ishmaelites, to Amalekites, to Amalekites, then to the Egyptians, who now Potiphar bought him. Did you see the transition and the journey? So where he is, going back. Where, where am I going back? And he was a young person. He doesn't even know. So anything could have happened to him. We can also trace it back today to internet. You are all by yourself. In your room. On your phone. On the train. Nobody is there. It's only you looking at that. You might think. But anyway, it's not even like that. Today's internet, nobody is secret. Because your IP is being registered. All your provider have have details if you tell if you argue and says oh you gave me um i paid more bill that i'm supposed to pay why am i bill they will just immediately roll down everything you have done send it to you by post all the sites you visited all the things it's not hidden not that we know so it's not even to compare with them um, joseph because this one is an open secret it's very open. They know what you have gone in. If you like, delete it on your phone hundred times. It's on your IP system. It's registered with them. So there's no need. But Joseph even there says, no. How can I do such a great wickedness against my God? Holiness. Holiness. Holiness is you. Hallelujah. You. The love you have for the Lord. The honor you have for Jesus. The respect you have for Elohim. The fear. What holiness is, the measure of, of fear and respect and the honor you have for God. Cure ED. That's my own definition. And brethren, it has guided me over the years. You know, when you read like this and the Lord is speaking to you, try and make it bespoke. Try and make it your own watchword. Make it your own guiding principles that will take you. And it will. My own definition is holiness is about the fear, the level, and the, the level of respect, the level of fear, and the level of honor you have for God. So it's not by mouth. It's in practice. And that's what it is saying. And the Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. In Second Peter chapter 3, 11, he's saying that seeing this that we have, seeing then that all this will surely come, that one day the world will be rolled away like a stone, a scroll, seeing that one day the mountains will leap to look for places to hide these huge things we're seeing and we can't even climb. These oceans will roar, trying to cover, seeking where to run to. And those that are dead in the sea will be thrown out of the waters because the sea is saying, I can't keep you anymore. I'm looking for where to hide myself. That this sun we are seeing now and then when it's hot, oh, it's such a hot day. Oh, it's scorching. It's this, this. The Bible says we fall. We'll fall. When it falls on the earth, what will, you, what will happen? Consuming. That the moon which we are seeing now will be darkened. That the great day of the Lord will be terrible. Who shall stand? Not to scare anyone. Not at all. But that is what is reserved for those who will not love God. Who will not allow this world to be peaceful. Those who devise wickedness. If we have our prisons to put them in. The judges and the court to put them in and to judge them. How much more how they have destabilized this earth. In their wickedness with all the things. The conspirators are calling 
a people conspirate conspirators we don't know who is the conspirator anymore because everybody all of them are conspirators but if you shout more yours the other person becomes a conspirator and you are out of it when actually you're the king and the queen of conspirator so everywhere around us but those propagating it and those against it they all have their own conspiracies these are the world we are living in the bible says seeing that christ will come again that these things will happen what manner of persons we ought to be in all holy conversations and in first corinthians 15 3 and 4 said to the 34 said there awake 34 sorry awake to righteousness and sin not for some do not have they have not the knowledge of god when you have the knowledge of elohim and the knowledge of elohim is the word that's why satan doesn't want us to read our bible we are happy surfing through other things we are happy reading books we're happy flipping through our internet playing games and all those things but not to read this word and hide it in our heart and that's the secret all wisdom is in the bible knowledge is in the bible brethren i am a living witness people think oh um look at oh she's this she's intelligent no 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 not at all not me because i know myself before i found out knowing the lord reading the scriptures was something else every wisdom you're talking you're speaking wisdom even in your academics it shows forth the knowledge I now said, wow, when we read that God made Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego ten times better. How? Why? Because they read. When they were reading, they read about Joseph. They said, no, he's about our age. If we could do it, then we will. And they went to the eunuch and said to him, please, can we not eat this meat? And they proposed in their heart not to defile themselves with a portion of the king's meat, not to defile themselves with the things, the fashions of this world, not to defile themselves with the reigning things of this world, not to defile themselves with what people are going for, with those dance, with those, you know, lewd things, not to defile themselves with those parties and the riotous living, not to defile themselves with idolatry, idolatry. The things you esteem more highly than the word. The things that will occupy you more than the presence of the word. They said, no way. Please, could we just eat the vegetables? Only vegetables. And God gave them what they didn't ask for. Wisdom, knowledge, protection, faith, boldness, fearlessness. Wow. The three Hebrew children said to Nebuchadnezzar, look, we are not mindful. We are not afraid of you. Throw us into that fire. And we're quite happy to go for it. Did it burn them? No. But rather, everyone who tried to put them in, who were part of putting them into that fire, was, were, was consumed. They were all consumed. But they saw a fault line. In holiness and righteousness, God will always show up. Amen. Not even showing up. He now lives in us. He takes care. He guides us. That's the principle. That's the power. A lot of people are looking for power. You know, if you go to the blog, yes, um, you know, now to read, you know, the ultimate power. In the power to become the sons of God. The power to tread over serpents and scorpions. The power, you know, to um, eat and drink deadly poison and it will not hurt you. The power of righteousness. The power to be witnesses. All those just few things listed out there. Brethren, when you read them, ultimate is holiness righteousness blessed are the pure in heart they are the secret for they shall see god amen you will see him in your everyday life you will see him in the classroom you will see him at work you will see him in the ocean you will see him on the airplane you will see him in the farm on the farm in the farm you will see him in every situation of your life, you will see him in trouble. You will see him in, on top of the mountain. Even in the valley, you will see him. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The criteria. We will continue this um, lesson tomorrow morning because we're going, we still have to look at purity of heart. It's all about it. 
his righteousness and his sanctification and his holiness, which we're going to look at. So brethren, ultimate our Christian life. You want to see him? Wow. And they say, I want to see, see, see Jesus lifted up in your life, in the kitchen, in your car, before you go, open doors, blessed are the pure in heart. He just need his heart clean. He doesn't want, want it to be filled with creepy things, creeping things, with foxes, with, um, what do you call it now, maggots and the flies and then snakes and cockroaches. Nah, not that heart. He says, poach them. Today, how do we poach them? Calling on him to say, Lord, poach it. Poach my heart. Keep it pure. For it's the power, is the secret of seeing you in everything. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we give you praise. We give you glory and the honor. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see you. Lord, we can continue on this message and talk about it for the rest of our lives. Precious Father, we ask today that you give us a pure heart. Cleanse us. We desire it. We want it. That's where joy lies. That's where peace lies. That's where liberty lies. Lord, that's where greatness lies. Purity of heart. It takes away every other thing that is a weight upon our lives, drawing us back. Purity of heart that we may see you and hear you and know what you're showing us. Thank you, Father, for we know you have heard and answered our prayers. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.